So how can we tell if our plants are affected by root disease? There are definitely some circumstances that are more conducive to root disease than others. Number one, recirculating water gardens. When we recirculate water, in the case of aeroponic gardens, top feed drip, flood and drain, deep water culture, all these situations where the plants are all sharing water, uh, essentially the ability to pass the disease from one plant to another is not mitigated whatsoever. So we can see rampant spread of disease. The only way that we're going to see this disease in a peat-based garden is if we overwater. If we water while the pot is still moist or wet, we can compound effect, move into this overwatering effect, which then prevents the plant from taking up as much water as it wants and lowers the oxygen levels in the root zone, creating an anaerobic environment which then can actually allow the root disease to gain a strong foothold in a dirt peat-based garden. Otherwise, if you allow a peat-based garden to dry out properly between irrigations, there's no way you're gonna have root disease. So in most circumstances, when we're assessing root disease situations, it will generally be in a recirculating water garden. So when we're running a recirculating water garden, we want to constantly be monitoring water temperature. It should not be higher than 65 degrees Fahrenheit and cooler is generally better, but I would say not really below 55 or 58, depending on the system. If it's an aero system, you could go a little lower, but flood and drain, you don't want to hit the roots with huge volumes of cold water. So the water, cooler water has higher oxygen levels, so it's definitely going to be, have less disease in it. But the main things to also watch is water consumption, food consumption. So you should have your reservoir set up so you can tell how many gallons did those plants drink today. And you make a note, how many gallons did they drink? They drank five gallons, okay, now I know. And you should see that amount go up. Their water consumption should increase all the way up until fifth week of flower, for example. The other thing to watch is food consumption. <clears throat> so that's important with regards to reservoir maintenance. You know, if you're, if you're not topping up your res with fresh water and you're just allowing the nutrient solution to get more and more concentrated, then you're not really gonna know where the food consumption is at. So in general, I recommend topping up the res with straight water so that we can tell how many ppm of food our plants ate in a 24 hour period. So if you're always watching water consumption and food consumption, and if you notice that it goes down, then you know you're developing a problem with root disease and you have to do something about it. If food and water consumption goes up continually, then you're on your way to a bumper crop. So pay close attention to your water and food consumption, make notes of these things. If you see that water and food consumption is slowing down, you should definitely take steps immediately to get the problem under control. You may need to use root disease preventatives. Uh, there's enzyme products, there's products like Clean Slate. Uh, and <clears throat> you may also need to potentially strip the decaying root matter from the system with H2O2 and then stimulate new white roots with a rooting stimulator and then back to feeding roots. This is something I call emergency reservoir maintenance. And uh, for details on that, check out the grower's handbook. You'll find charts explaining emergency reservoir maintenance programs. Just remember, watch your food consumption, watch your nutrient consumption. They should go up.